Isan is a talented, accomplished community leader. She was the 2020 recipient of the Emerging Artist Award from the Connecticut Office of the Arts. A year later, she was appointed to be an Arts Community Impact Coordinator at the Northwest Connecticut Arts Council. Isan has inspired youth to tap into their own self-expression through the Black Girl Magic Workshops. Participants have been introduced to the arts as an empowerment and embodiment tool that encourages young women of color to express themselves. Isan graduated from Dean College Cum Laude with a bachelor's degree in art and entertainment management and a focus on communication. She is an actress, performed in a college rendition of Hairspray, performed in The Wiz, and also performed at the Bushnell Theater. As a singer, she has numerous releases and music videos that are positive and inspiring. She has experience as a music director for an original musical, Hope for Hartford, a burlesque show director, producer, and performer. According to her website, there is no stage Isan can't dominate. And I don't doubt that one bit. Hello, Isan. Thank Thank you you for joining me today. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where to start after that. I mean, (laughs) you're young, you're accomplished, you've accomplished more than most people of my age. And just uh, start anywhere. Tell me about an accomplishment you achieved that you felt was out of your ability. Um, I don't think anything's out of anyone's ability. (laughs) So I guess I'll say one that um, challenged me or helped um, grow me and make more clarity was probably receiving, um, it was one of my first grants that um, opportunities I received. Um, And actually it was, it was two of them. They came around back to back. One of them was um, an arts work initiative, which I got to work with um, Connecticut Public Broadcasting working on an initiative project um, to get um, artists in the community um, resources and like let them know what's going on. Um, That was, so that was one of my first things. That was one of the first things that kind of allowed me to use my degree in a certain, to a certain extent, as well as I was receiving a match um, savings program. So what that actually, which was from Assets for Artists. So the first grant was from Connecticut Office of the Arts or through that um, organization. And then the other one was from Asset for Artists, which is a mass organization. Um, And they provided, they matched me up to $2,000 to put towards my music endeavor, my artistic career. And um, they also provided workshops for us. And they also provided... um, like an outline of like what a business proposal is supposed to be like. So there was just so many resourceful things that I was able to leverage um, with that opportunity. So I feel like those two things at that time helped me prepare for where I'm currently at and helped in terms of a business wise um, to make this transition as an artist Um, And having the business aspect instead of just an artist, but being able to maneuver and being able to execute in a business woman mindset instead of just an artistic creative space, which is beautiful. So I'm happy to have um, been able to fuse that. So in terms of accomplished and most proud, I would say those are because it helped um, root me um, really well in a certain space because it helped invest in a different um, artistic and business space. Do you think you would have accomplished all of this if you hadn't had that degree behind you to give you the, uh, some of the knowledge base? Um, absolutely. But I think it's also the, um, determination to, to get it done and to ask questions to, um, be consistent. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, in those things. So yes, definitely. um, I feel like we all can leverage more of the spaces and the resources that we have. So like for, for example, school, I, um, I went to Dean College, and I, um, I was in my advisor's office, like all the time. (laughs) And um, we had a wonderful relationship. And I knew I I wanted to do music. And I I just knew that that was what what I wanted to do. Um, long story short, I won't go into the whole thing with that story, but, um, 
in terms of because I was in her office and because I was speaking to her about what I wanted, she introduced me to this whole other world, which was music or artistic therapy, right? Now it's more common, but during that time, this was in 2008, 2009 that I was first hearing about it. And then just seeing the beautiful transition it has starting to um, create it in our community, I think is beautiful. Um, but in terms of art therapy, so I, I did all my research, even still till now, I'm still doing my own type of research. And I've actually been able to hold creative workshops as well in terms of that, um, that determination that I know what I want to provide for myself, for the community, whatever that is, that all ended up coming into play because I was able to get the grants, but not only get the grants, but knowing what those grants meant or what those opportunities meant. And I feel like sometimes people miss that all the time and they don't get the fullness of what the resource is. So. I, I have experience with grants and I find often that people just look at the reasons why they want the money, but they don't understand that it's important to understand the reasons why the grantor is giving out the money and how to tie what you're doing to their mission and how mm -hmm. important that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you already understand that. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think sometimes the lack of knowledge for like just the general public or even artists that are trying to find their way, like sometimes I feel like it's not shared as often or it's not known. So I know one of my roles as an artist and as a community and as a person who loves the arts themselves is to make sure that, yo, do you know that there's this grant? I think you're eligible or like, here's this thing, um, even if it's not for me. Um, there was an artist actually I met in Rhode Island. You, when you're an entertainer, as I'm sure you know, like you just meet people from all over, right? However mm -hmm. that may be. So I was I was looking through an email blast from one of the lists that I'm on. And I'm like, oh, Rhode Island. Oh, there's this grant. Oh, let me send this to this person. And they're just, I'm like, listen, I don't know if you're like how well connected you are in terms of grant things, but here's an opportunity I think that you're perfect for, you know? And I feel like all of us need to also realize what our roles are, you know, um, as an artist, as a creative, as a community member, um, is very important because we have a ripple effect on each other, however that may be. Absolutely. I, I really love the way artists kind of help each other out, especially the ones that are really trying to network. And I, I see that uh, very often in like in the New Haven area, Mm -hmm. um, am yeah. among other places as well. So it, it's great to hear that you are contributing to that and, and encouraging that as well. Yeah. So I think it's, it's important. Um, yeah, absolutely. We all, we all have a love for music and, and the arts and why not help each other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about the, um, let me see, I touched on it in the, uh, the intro, the, um, the black girl magic workshops. Yes. So I had an opportunity to work with another creative. Um, actually, I was going to a workshop, which I didn't know. To, I just go to workshops and like, there's, <laughs> I just, whatever. So I didn't know at the time that at the workshop that it allowed me to be eligible if I went to one more workshop to be, um, to apply to a grant. So I'm like, oh, cool. All right. This is great. So, and this is what I'm saying, taking the opportunity and using your resources because you never know what opportunities go into that. So I feel like, again, people have that go over their heads and I am I feel like I'm also slacking by not tapping into more. But anyways, um, so this grant had me eligible to work with another artist that was in the group of people that attended these workshops. And um, her and I, she was a dancer. Her, her focus was on dance. Mine was on the creative writing aspect of it. And um, we both... Um, uh, have yoga training. Um, now I have my, at the time I did, I wasn't certified, but now I am certified yoga instructor as well. So we were bringing in some, um, yoga expression as well, just in terms of meditative, making sure that we're all here in the same space and like starting at the same place as we start to create and have them listen to what the actual, um, what we were presenting to them and offering to them that day. So it was a group of girls from the ages of eight to 18. 
we had about 10 girls, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we broke up the girls, two groups, um, older girls and younger girls, and then we flopped um, halfway through the day. So pretty much what we did is um, we presented dancing and creative writing as a way to express themselves in terms mm. of how do we break that down. So um, I, me personally, my mission is to also break that whole stigma that you have to, if you create anything that you have to sell it and you have to display it and you have to be this glamorous thing, it doesn't, it's a therapy, right? Um, I feel like a lot of people don't try to express themselves because of that, oh, it's supposed to look this way. It's supposed to sound this way. It's supposed to have this rhythm or this vibration or whatever the case is on whatever the art discipline. Um, I want to break that. I want people to be able to reflect on their self or their community or whatever it is, right? It can be something happy. It can be something sad. It can be just an expression. Um, but that's what we did. So um, I broke down my creative process more or less with them, I gave them like a bag of goodies to kind of um, write about. Like the way that I, the way that I take on writing is how I had expressed it to them. And then the same with um, Leia, which was the other um, artist that I worked with um, in dance, right? So she broke down and did that presentation, but also giving them a voice. These tools give people a voice. So when I was younger, um, I also didn't speak that much when I was younger. Like I wasn't mute, I wasn't selective mute or anything, but I was just a quiet kid, you know? Um, and like, but music was like my thing. When I was upset, I would just like close my door, blast yep, my yep. music, you know I'm upset. Like, you <laughs> know I'm upset. So um, I that's what, that's what I did for, in terms of the Black Girl Magic was an opportunity to present to um, girls of color, um, ways to express themselves um, with everything that they're seeing and um, just giving them examples to give them their voice and taking a survey before and after and seeing the confidence that that one Absolutely. day, that one day workshop <laughs> had given them. Um, and then the parents just being like, wow, I just see my daughter opened oh. up so much, you know, and then then you see that these girls start to create their own community, right? In this interaction. Yeah. And it's just such a beautiful thing because um, it's it's hard. Life is hard, right? But we're also here because life is that. We're here to, we're supposed to support each other, love each other, you know, learn from each other. Um, so that's you, what I did. You kind of mentioned outcomes it was the whole goal kind of to help for empowerment and help improve self-confidence and expression? Yes. So the, the goal is to be able to reflect on yourself, like take, take, taking this thing, taking dance and being able to use the, your body as an expression to tell a story or to release something, right? Because mm -hmm. when we exercise, we end up releasing some stress in our body. When we do yoga, when we do anything physical, basketball, sports, whatever it is, our body feels at ease when we're done and then we're able to rest. So artistry, I think, is another way for us to do that emotionally. So like giving ourselves an emotional workout to be able to process when things might be a little bit harder. Or things might be great. Sometimes, like, we can be so excited that we just, like, go overboard, you know? <laughs> so just finding a good, happy balance um, to be able to actually truly be in the moment. So anything that you have experienced already in life, that you're able to process it um, because it's important. I think Absolutely. it's so important because each one of us has something in us that is supposed to provide to the community in some way. You know, um, we all have a light in us to um, share. You know, that's why I just share all my information, like, because I have my own light. So you have yours. So, like, here's this information. Here's something that you can probably get from what I have. So, and it's a bright light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, was this just a one time workshop or is it continuing? So, um, it depends. I usually kind of wait for like grant opportunities, but um, I may be having an, 
right now. So I ended up receiving another grant opportunity, fellowship opportunity, <laughs> um, which is the Accelerate, no, sorry, the Artists of Color Accelerate program, which basically um, each fellow, there's 10 of us, we all got paired up with an organization to be our host. My host is actually the Bushnell. So I am working on um, doing a version of like my creative workshop um, with them um, along with like a performance aspect. So um, there's a, there's the goal that I have, you know, like I just feel mm -hmm. like it's so important for people to have a way to express themselves. I think it will help allow the community as a whole to process things as an individual so that they know exactly what they mean when they're saying it. Because I feel like at times we may naturally react to things, naturally express ourselves without really knowing why we're saying or doing certain things. So I think it's important for us to really, like if we feel something about something like, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what this is. It doesn't feel right. I need to like process this before like saying anything or doing anything. Um, again, with any type of news. But um, I think if we slowed down and processed. Um, Absolutely. That our communities would be and feel a little bit safer. I, I love that message. And I hope you can spread it wide. Yeah. We, we so definitely need it. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think performance, I think performance therapy is important for everyone. Like, again, taking away, oh, I'm getting paid for this or you should get paid for this. Really. And if you think about entertainment or the movies or when you see dance, like all these things bring up emotional things for us to process that we probably didn't process yet. Right. And now we're crying at the movies or we're laughing hysterically, you know, like we have to give our body and our lives that opportunity to feel that, whatever it is. So um, yeah, I just want to provide another way, long story short. I love it. So <laughs> how do we keep an eye on on what you're doing? Do we go, um, what's your website or yeah, Your my socials. website is um, Isan Music, so Y S A N N E Music dot com, um, as well as my Instagram. Um, you can go on that. That's Y S A N N E two one. Um, yeah, those two. I mean, I do have a Facebook one as well, Isan Music. Um, just so because I know everyone doesn't have all the platforms and stuff. So yeah. I do have a Facebook one that's also linked to everything as well. So Isan Music for Facebook. Um, at worst case, go to my website because everything is connected to that. Um, <laughs> there are some shows that are coming up as well. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah. August 4th, I see you're going to be in uh, yes. Summer Courtyards concert series yes. in Weathersfield. Yes. Looking yes. forward to that. Yes, I'm excited for that for sure. So, um, has there been anyone that has inspired you to take this path that you've taken, or someone that maybe inspired you during the journey that uh, kind of gave you a lift? Uh, I guess in terms of knowing my mission, right? Um, <laughs> there's a song that Brandy sang um, called "Have You Ever." And that had me, so I guess the backstory, not kind of backstory. So I was also in transition from a private school to a public school. So still wearing the plaid skirts and everything. But um, yeah, so there was this really, really cute boy that was in the class. And I, when I heard that song, I'm just like, <gasps> how does she know it was just like she knows exactly what i'm feeling and i was just like i that's what i want to do i want to make people know that they're not alone in this moment whatever this moment is mm -hmm. you're not alone like it's a it's a human thing it's a natural thing you know so um i guess that song, that performance of the song, um, in terms of other inspirations, as I've gotten older and started studying a little bit more into my history, um, there's there's uh, 
there's Alicia Keys, um, there's Beyonce, just like her command for the stage, you know. Mm-hmm. And then there's like old classics, Etta James, uh, Billie Holiday. Um, so these and, are all musical influences, right? Yeah. And then, I mean, in terms of like keeping that drive, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's my my parents, like for sure. My oh. parents definitely have because they're the ones who exposed me to all of these things. So I really like encourage like parents or even adults, like adults just indulge in the arts. Um, that's one thing that I'm trying to like, again, just allow people to express themselves in other ways that they didn't think that they may need to express. Right. So my parents um, have definitely been a strong like influence for me. And then amongst them exposing me to, then there's been um, other musicians and teachers that I've had that have um, really like inspired me so much. Um, Yeah, it's just been a beautiful thing. There's just, there's a lot, like people really inspire me. Musicians like really inspire me. Like I went to, I feel like, like around all these musicians I'm just like oh my goodness I'm nowhere close to (laughs) like I went to um Artist Collective in Hartford and my senior year um I got accepted into the academy um the performing arts um school in Hartford and um I was just like oh how am I like I know that like you know there's like the natural like um the natural like gifts that we all have but then like seeing these other musicians I'm just like they're so good like I need to be like that I'm like why am I here I'm out of place (laughs) you know and it's just like that's where I'm at now I'm just like really trying to hone into my musicianship on another space outside of a vocalist you know I mean yes a vocalist is a musician do not get me wrong I just want to level up my musicianship um on another level are but you working on are you working on any new music? Yes, I am. Yeah. So Good. um I'm excited for that. I'm trying to lock down some musicians to like some people that I want to work with or work with again to um to be on this project. I really want it to be a live live music. Oh. Um yeah, which is a lot of work, but I really want that. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'll be blessed soon. Um, I do have like some people. It's just, you know, just locking down and me getting yeah. some. Um, I have some, I definitely have some ideas together. So um, working on my own stuff, kind of doing my outline, being like, all right, let's just make this with live music now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to do all the work so they don't have to do it all. Excellent. I, I just, I, I love listening to your, uh, what you already created and looking forward to uh, what you have coming up too. Thank you so much. Do you um do you want to play a quick game? That yes. I, I play with everybody. Yep. All right. It's called Lyrical Ponderings. I'm going to give you a song title. Oh, the, the song title is in the form of a question. Okay. <laughs> you can either tell me who sang the song or answer the question. Okay. <laughs> give me pick a number between one and 201. Uh. 21 to match isan 21 <laughs> your, your my jersey hashed... number oh yes. is that what it came from <laughs> yeah i played soccer from oh, like cool. seven years old all the way through in college fun fact oh somebody already picked 21 you know i'm gonna okay. like, i'm gonna still gonna that's give okay it to nope 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 let's pick the one let's uh do 18 18 here we go why do fools fall in love? Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I guess I'm gonna just answer the question. <laughs> I'm like blank and I'm that's like wait. Harder to answer that question. That's pretty hard. <laughs> Why do fools fall in love? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, geez, this is a harder. <laughs> you definitely probably would have gotten the other one. 
Right? Okay. So why okay. Why do fools fall in love? Because they're fools. <laughs> the, the, his curiosity killed the cat. Um. <laughs> That's a good response. <laughs> that was uh, originally done by the teenagers. Yes, because I was like, wait, first of all, I was like, hasn't that song been done? Because you said originally, I'm like, wait, there's been way too many covers. No. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a popular song. Wow. But- the, the, number 21 was isn't she lovely <laughs> baby wonder yeah. isan thank you so much uh for spending some time with me and definitely i can't wait to see you performing live you're going to be playing uh, like i said august 4th in um summer courtyard concert series in weathersfield and i'm sure you'll be adding some more dates to that right yes 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 there's a yeah there's a few more dates, a couple in August and uh, even September. So go on the website. Yeah, which is? Y-S-A-N-N-E music.com, Isan Music. Easy, easy to remember. Thank you very much, Isan. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Mark.